Hi, my name is Jolene, and today I'll be talking about the canine parvovirus, also known as TPV. TPV, if left untreated, the mortality rate is approximately 90%. So what is TPV? TPV is an extremely contagious viral disease that can manifest in two ways. The first is intestinal, which is what I'll be focusing on today, and the second is cardiac, which affects the heart muscles of fetuses and young puppies, and in most cases leads to death. Most cases of CPV are of dogs that are six weeks to six months old, which is why it is very important to start vaccinating early on. So today I'll be talking about the origins of CPV, prevention, signs and symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. CPV is believed to have originated from feline panleukopenia virus, which is an extremely contagious disease that affects the digestive system of cats. After CPV first started appearing in canines, it began rapidly spreading around the world with how contagious it is. So here I have the life cycle of canine parvovirus. So it begins with the carrier dog excreting the virus in its feces, and then another dog comes along and ingests the virus. And once the virus passes through into their intestines, it begins multiplying very rapidly, and then that dog then becomes a carrier of parvo. And without treatment, the cycle is continuous, and with treatment, the su success rate of survival goes up ex exponentially. So the key to prevention of the parvovirus is starting vaccines at an early age, which is six weeks, and continuing every three to four weeks until a puppy is 16 weeks old. And then a booster is administered at a year, and then every three years after that for the rest of their lives. Another important part of prevention is when a dog does have CPV, keeping them properly quarantined and following proper disinfection procedures with anything they may have come into contact with. If a dog does come into contact with CPV, there are signs and symptoms you can look for three to ten days after exposure. Some signs and symptoms are bloody diarrhea, which is often quite severe, fever, dehydration, rapid weight loss, and lack of appetite and energy. It is important to note that in some cases, though, dogs do not, or dogs with CPV do not appear with signs and symptoms. And uh, if a dog does have signs and symptoms, it is important to take them to a vet to get a physical examination and in which they can find that they are dehydrated and have swollen lip nodes. If a veterinarian does suspect that a dog has CPV after a physical examination, they will do blood work and other tests to confirm that a dog has CPV. Another test is the fecal test, also known as a SNAP test. So you take the cotton swab into the fecal sample with a light layer of the feces. And then you snap the solution up here into the part where the Q-tip is and you swirl it around until it is all mixed together, which it is then sucked back up into here and then this acts as like an eyedropper kind of. So you drop about five drops into here and then you snap down the test to activate it, hence the name. And then after about five to eight minutes, if the test is positive, a second dot will appear next to the control dot, which is there at the beginning of the test. And if a dog is diagnosed with CPV, it is very important to seek treatment as soon as possible. Some treatments include antibiotics, intravenous fluids, and nutrient supplements, which fights the virus, um, helps with dehydration and malnourishment that may have occurred. Um, it is important to note that treatment plans vary from case to case depending on the dog's signs and symptoms that they present with and how severe the case of CPV is. So, as you now know, the canine parvovirus is an extremely contagious and dangerous disease, which is why it is so important to know what it is, how to prevent it, what signs and symptoms to look for so that diagnosis and treatment happen rapidly to increase the chances of survival with CPV.